I found this on the on the uh, in the instruction manual, the rising and falling edge. And uh, if somebody can enlighten me as far as what does, for example, if no edge is appointed, the oscilloscope will be triggered on the last edge whose code is true. Uh, so here it talks about the rising and falling edges. I don't understand this. If somebody could enlighten me on this, uh, that would be greatly appreciated. Okay, I thought I would uh, show you the setup that I'm using for the measurement and for the comparison of the two channels versus two uh, bits on the logic analyzer. So, real simple circuit here. I got my 555 coming in. I think I'm running it around 65 kilohertz. Um, and we have the two NAND gates of the 74HC00. Uh, just use as inverters, you know, uh, and uh, the 22 nanofarad uh, capacitor, I take that in and out to slow down the edge. Uh, I'll show you what I'm using that for, and I just put the load on just for, you know, to, it was ringing a little bit too much, I think I uh, got that down a bit. Um, the yellow, obviously, is channel 1. On this side, it's also the logic analyzer. Uh, uh, bit D14 which is in red and the output is channel 2 which is blue and that's logic analyzer uh, D15 and it's in green so that's the schematic of the setup and I just got it set up here on my uh, proto board um, here is the chip obviously I'm trying to get the two probes as close to it as possible the grounds are nothing to write home about, but I guess they're kind of reasonable. I got pretty thick wires inside connecting it. And the uh, logic pod, I actually got that connected with one ground and trying to use kind of a shorter than, than uh, shorter ground lead than what they provide with the flying leads. And that's the setup. And now I guess uh, let's take a look on the logic analyzer. What I have is both the uh, the channel 1 and channel 2 are uh, at zero right in the middle of the screen. I got two volts per division and I actually have my threshold set at 1.02 and if I change the threshold uh, we can I think my uh, yeah so I do have uh, I have it on on the edge of uh, D15, so uh, it should be changing a little bit with. Um, well, D15 is uh, is a little bit faster than D14, so let's change that to D14. And now my threshold should be changing a little bit as far as the position of the wave, and it it does a tiny bit. Uh, so and disappears completely when you go to negative and stuff so uh, that's not really that relevant uh, what is is that we can measure the propagation delay quite easily the propagation delay is uh, let's say I'm gonna set the threshold at 2 volts just to make it easy to measure so we got it from here to about here uh, 5 nanoseconds so we have about 7 nanoseconds which is exactly per spec for the HC family um, so that's that's fine uh, but notice that while the logic analyzer uh, traces are very nice and steady uh, the uh, I should say the scope uh, traces are very nice and steady the logic analyzer basically jumps around in a window of about 10 nanoseconds and also when we stop it uh, you can see that actually as far as being coordinated at 2 volts I would expect if the logic analyzer is tied to the scope properly and samples at the same time uh, that you would have the two, uh, 2 nanoseconds right here would correlate directly to somewhere around here on the edge and same thing for the falling again it's actually ahead of the true 2 volt threshold here which should be about here so I'm 
I'm about seven, eight nanoseconds ahead with the uh, logic uh, analyzer portion. And the, the thing is though that obviously it changes up to 10 nanoseconds and uh, I would expect some uh, variability just because I'm sampling at 2 nanoseconds. So, but seems 10, that seems like uh, 5 sample points, seems a little bit too much. Uh, so, and sometimes it gets it around the edge, sometimes it gets it ahead, same thing for this one. Um, I'm not sure if I like that. Uh, I think that could be, the window should be uh, more narrow. And if we go into display and then do these dots, um, you know, many sample points, uh, why can't this one sample it here, you know, or probably I'm thinking these two are between the two uh, <clears throat> threshold points, so shouldn't it be either this edge or that edge? I don't know. Uh, that doesn't seem quite right. And same thing for this one, which in this case, uh, maybe it's this one, uh, you could say, hey, that could be it. Uh, so this one seems to be better, but this one isn't, and it changes from uh, trace to trace. And now for another thing that I find slightly annoying, um, the fact when you're at this really uh, fast time base two nanoseconds which is the fastest and I stop it and I start scrolling looking uh, at the data uh, on the logic analyzer I have these artifacts that obviously are not there and you know now here's a pulse that's like I don't know what 250 picoseconds and that's complete bullshit and obviously they disappear as you stretch it out they're not there so there is something with the display algorithm at this speed that's not right. Um, I'm not sure if it's the end of the world, but again, I don't like it. It's it shouldn't be there, obviously, but it is. You can obviously, uh, do the measurements here uh, same way as before. So let's say between these two. Uh, the nice thing is, even though you cannot set up the bus to have a hex type of display, uh, the actual um, the actual display here for the two cursors, I have a binary on the bottom, for example, and then I have a hex above it. We have C X X X, and uh, same thing. That's for this. Uh, cursor B and then cursor A is I have A X X so I both I actually have the hex and the binary um, the the one problem that I see as being kind of ridiculous is that for example I would like to know how far apart the edges are but the cursors don't give me that it gives me the position of cursor A which is you know uh, minus 14.4 nanoseconds obviously from the center from the trigger uh, time-wise and then cursor B which is minus 3 so you got to do the subtraction it's gonna be 11 something or um, <clears throat> it's um, it seems like it, that they should obviously put in Delta uh, Delta time which they do on the on the analog channels but in the logic analyzer you don't get it okay um, so in conclusion, I've showed you some of the uh, problems I guess I have encountered with this Rigol. Um, the big question I think is, are you getting your money's worth? The oscilloscope is definitely worth the money. Uh, I think you can buy the 100 megahertz for about 500, maybe 600 at the most. And the logic, uh, the oscilloscope logic analyzer, uh, the D uh, model, I think I've seen it for basically about 1100 maybe 1000 um, and um, so the oscilloscope is kind of, um, the logic analyzer is probably additional 400 to 500 uh, dollars which is not a small amount and the question is uh, you know is that logic analyzer worth the money and I'd like to see for that kind of money I would like to see state analysis i would like to you know with the external clocks i would like to see being able to label your uh, individual traces you know at least four bit uh, four letters ascii characters you know so you could do address zero address one data one you know some kind of control enable read write um, i would like to also obviously see some of these problems that they have uh, fixed 
I would like to uh, I would like to see maybe um, you know the cursor problem fixed I would like to see the um, some kind of uh, decoding of at least some of the uh, you know the PC uh, the SPI the I squared C uh, buses which seems like uh, it's not that hard to do I would rather see that than the Fourier analysis on the logic analyzer on the oscilloscope and um, there are companies out there that actually have uh, uh, USB type of uh, uh, logic analyzers and I think the two companies are yeah I've, so I've looked this up on the web Intronix uh, they have one for about four hundred dollars and Tech Tools, something called DV3100 for 500. That one is 18 channel. Uh, they both have some kind of a compression uh, algorithm. They do the uh, two bit bus, one bit bus decoding type of stuff. And uh, they have uh, actually the Intronix has a multi level triggering, so you could actually qualify it, look at a signal and trigger off of that so that's much more logic uh, real logic analyzer type of stuff so my question still is uh, you know should you go with the two separate ones or like this one like this regular right, all together uh, in one package and I'm tempted to say to get your maximum money's worth I would probably just buy the scope and go with these uh, better uh, USB uh, type of logic analyzers. I think you could squeeze a little bit more for your buck uh, out of that package. Uh, but I do like the compactness. I don't have that much uh, bench space and so I'm kind of, and I know I will use this. The, the, the big problem is if you have something complicated and complex, will you use it? And here, this uh, unit sitting on my bench, I will probably use it you know, all the time. So I like the convenience, but you have to decide, you know, how much money. Of course, if, you, if money is no object, buy something like uh, what Dave Jones has, the Agilent. I think it's the 3054A or I don't know what model, uh, which obviously is, is a wonderful machine. But, you know, for most of us who probably uh, want... Uh, you know, don't want to have a logic analyzer uh, oscilloscope be worth more than our car. I think, you know, we'll have to go with something a little bit cheaper and you have to decide if you want to have it separate or together in one machine. Thank you.